Man, these Finnish days are really long. How's it going, everyone? I'm currently on a business trip here in Finland for engineering purposes. And I recently saw this video, and I'm gonna put a picture of the thumbnail up here somewhere, that talked about American manufacturing. And I figured, you know what? I can probably put in my two cents here because as a mechanical and manufacturing engineer, I have a little bit of insight in this world. Now, before you go all out and say, who the hell is this guy? I should let you know, I've worked with some of the most biggest companies that you have heard of. I'm not gonna name them, but they range from from aerospace to consumer electronics. I have trained many of these companies on how to use certain software, and I have a good insight on why they decide to go with certain routes compared to, say, the United States. I've even asked some of them this question on why they decide to make things overseas, and I figured you might be interested in that. Now, first, let's get one thing out of the way. Is American manufacturing dead? No. It is not dead. It definitely is not as good as it used to be, but it's not dead. And the reason I say that is because there are still a lot of parts that have to be made in the USA, more specifically aerospace and ITAR and defense parts. They must be made in the USA. And there are a lot of manufacturers here in the United States that still produce a lot of those parts. And they have to be produced here in the US. They cannot be produced anywhere else by law law. So it's not dead, but it definitely isn't what it used to be. So if we have the ability to do these very sophisticated parts for aerospace and defense, then why are we not making things here in the USA? Why are we sending it over to China or any other foreign entity instead? Let's focus on China for a little bit. Why do we send things over to China? Well, you probably already know some of these reasons, but there are two, at least from what I've discovered, there are two primary reasons on why companies decide to ship things over to China. Number one is cost. Now, any company that says out there that they don't do it because of cost is absolutely lying. It is because of cost, but not because China is cheap. China is not cheap. They are just cheaper than the United States. The Chinese can produce some very amazing things. Now, let's get one thing out of the way. There is this common misconception that China produces cheap things, and it's true, they do, but there's a reason for that. The thing with China is you only get what you put in. If the company wants very cheap things, China will happily oblige. If the company wants very expensive, sophisticated, nice, beautiful things, China will oblige. It just so happens that the majority of companies working with China want very cheap garbage things. But the Chinese only do it because that's what is being put in. We don't have to look far to see the capabilities of the Chinese. They produce some of the things that you use every day. For example, Apple products. Apple products are made in China. The iPhone that we all think is absolutely beautiful and whatnot, that is made in China. You can call Apple whatever you want, but you can't say that their products are ugly. They're absolutely beautiful. And it just showcases the level of manufacturing that the Chinese are capable of. Now, they are able to produce these things at a much cheaper rate compared to the US. And that kind of brings me to my second point, And that, of course, is skill. The Chinese have an amazing level of skill when it comes to manufacturing. I can probably count on one hand how many people in the United States I know that I will put in the elite level, whereas I can probably fill an entire hotel filled with manufacturing experts from China. Unfortunately, in the US, there just isn't enough technical skill to produce the things that these companies want. Not only that, I think there's a very glaring issue that many people don't talk about, and that is, of course, pay. Being a manufacturer in the U.S. is really only worth it if you are the head honcho, if you're the boss. If you're a worker, you're not getting paid much to become what is known or what I like to call the modern day artisan of our time. You don't get paid much and there really isn't an incentive for you to learn all these things if you're really not going to go anywhere with it. The 
amount of technical skill that you need to manufacture things, unfortunately, is just not here in the United States. The unfortunate part is that we, you know, corporations, what they do is they take the stuff that you already know, and when they send it over to China, the Chinese make it better. And that's a common theme that I hear when I talk to people who are in charge of where things are being manufactured. The Chinese have a tendency to take the things given to them, and then they improve it as they go along. So we shared these manufacturing techniques that made us good in the United States with the Chinese when the corporations decided to go there. And then the Chinese made it way better, which kind of begs the question then, if you can't make it in the United States, why send it to China? Why not give it to, say, India or Vietnam or what have you? Well, that kind of goes back to my second point, skill. The Chinese are very, very good at what they do. I know that in America we have this very common misconception, China equals cheap. Let me tell you, I'm a mechanical engineer and a manufacturing engineer. China is not cheap. They're just damn good at what they do and they give it to you at a good price. Compare that to the US, it's absolutely sometimes a no-brainer to just have it made in China. But it's the skill. These guys know what they're doing. You cannot find the level of skill that the Chinese have in India, in Vietnam, or what have you. Let me give you an example. When I was talking to someone at a certain company that controls where things are manufactured, I asked them that exact same question. Why don't you make things in, say, India compared to China? And their response was simple. The Chinese, when you give them a task, even if they know that it's not going to work, they will do it and they will learn from it. And if possible, they will make it better. Whereas if you go anywhere else, say India, Vietnam, or what have you, they don't really want to do it because they think that they know better. And that's why they don't want to go to those countries. Another example I was given is for a certain company that was working with China, they already designed a fixture for many, many parts. When they decided to hand this fixture that was Chinese made over to India, the Indians refused to use it. They thought that they could come up with a better fixture. Why fix something that isn't broken? I wouldn't know. But little technical things like that can cause havoc. Now, from an engineer's perspective, I've given you multiple viewpoints here, but I have myself tried to keep things in the US. I'm a manufacturer myself. I owned a CNC machine for many years until I got rid of it. But ultimately, I have tried to keep things here in the United States of America. But we just can not compared to the price point that the Chinese and even the Indians uh, put out. A lot of people would say, yeah, I will buy US made products. But when that product is sometimes 20 to 30 times the price, nobody's going to buy it, unfortunately. Anyway, I hope this video gives you an insight on the engineering side of things when it comes to making things in China. I just wanted to keep this short and sweet. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.